The Lost Library welcomes you back to the continuing story from Adam RPG. We are outside the big city of Krasna's nominee. We're in the wasteland. Thankfully, we have Fidel by our side. We're in an area here that I'm not real sure what it's going to, what it's going to include, what kind of, if there's any loot at all in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to check it out, see if there's anything. And that shouldn't take too long. And then from there, we'll head back out into the wasteland. So let's go. You know, Lost, I have to be honest with you. I know you're leading this expedition and all, but I have to tell you, I'm just not comfortable at all being out here without some proper armor. You know that thorny armor you're carrying on you right now? That would come in handy. I don't know how you feel about this, but continuing out here in the wasteland could be very dangerous to our health. Maybe we should go back in to Krasno's Nominee and check out some of those... some of those missions inside the city itself. Maybe raise a few... few rubles so I can buy or do something, get some better armor. I don't know. I'm just talking. I'm not sure. What do you think? Well, you know what? Why don't we do this? First of all, it looks like I'm encumbered. So why don't I hand this medal over to you, Fidel? Okay. You know, let's just look at this area. Let's look, look through this area. Maybe we'll find something. Because we still need to find, in order for us to craft, in order for me to craft this thorny armor, which, yeah, it definitely will do, I need to find some hair fur and so far we're running out of luck here on that thinking maybe if we run into a caravan maybe maybe we'll be able to buy some but I hear what you're saying I absolutely hear what you're saying yeah you know it, it's a we're out here and it doesn't I don't know if it's a good idea right now I just think maybe it's better to go back into the big city. But it's your call. Whatever you think. Well, let's head back out. You know what we're going to do? We're a little ways away from Krasna's nominee. We're going to stay on the road here. What time is it? It's 5.57, so it's early in the morning. So we'll get the Krasna's nominee around breakfast. So let's let's head back here. I think you're right, Fidel. I think we're going to do that. We're going to head back into the safety of the city. Not feeling comfortable right now out here. You know, we need to... We need to find the outskirts of Krasno's nominee, and this is definitely not the outskirts because this is the wasteland. So let's enter the city here. Maybe we'll have better luck this time around. Let's see. Okay, let's look at the map here system again and try and figure out what is what. Okay, so this is the power station. We know there's nothing in there for us. We have, I think we went out this way, didn't we? We searched all this. Yeah, what is this here? You know, let's check this area out here. Why not? There's two of us here. Let's check it out. Maybe we'll find something in there. Looks like a, a well. Only problem is, okay, now do we have rope? 
Okay, well, let's find out first of all what this is and how do we how do we enter if we can even Okay, what's going on? So you squat near the giant well going deep into the depths and the Krasnos Namne. Having a rope might come in handy right about now. Ah, uh, you know what? We don't have a rope, so we're not going to do that. But Fidel, what is this place? Well, once people tried to build a vertical shaft here, I, re I remember that. They to dry the local swamp and make it into a veggie garden. But they quickly dug into some pre-existing tunnels. God knows why, but they stopped digging right after that fact. You shake your head as you peer into the dark abyss. Let's listen to the sounds coming out of the well. The sounds of water droplets hitting stone and quiet squeaking is all you hear. We won't jump down because we don't have any ro uh, rope, so what we'll do is we'll leave. But we checked it out. Good enough. Good to know. It's good to know. And what we're going to do is let's change into more casual attire here. And so we don't scare off the villagers. Let's get rid of this DIY DI, DI, do-it-yourself helmet and this protect your... Yeah, we don't need this face mask. Certainly aren't going to wear the thorny armor. We'll keep the bag. And I think we have a cap, don't we? We could wear... Yeah, we'll wear this flat cap it's good for speech craft. And I think we will carry our magnifying glass as well. Where is that? There it is. Hang on to that. And Fidel, same with you. You don't need this suit. I don't know why it does that all the time, but okay. So let's get that suit off of you there. You've still got this flat, you've got this hat. This uh, Tubetkia, and it's plus five survival. I don't think it's going to harm anybody with you wearing it, so you can hang on to that. So we'll just stay like that. Uh, oh no, no, no! You don't need the. Uh, you don't need to be running around with a with a knife like that, and certainly not your gun. Okay, let's go. That's a little better. Now let's look at the map again. So we we checked that area out. The only other area I guess would be here. I don't know if there's anything in here, but let's go there anyway. Nothing here, okay. Let's go by this truck. Uh, who's this guy? Did we talk to this guy? I think we did. Is that Daddy Longlegs? Yeah, it is. Okay, no, we don't want to talk to him. Let's leave. I think what we're going to do is we're going to head back into the main area. Or, you know who we never talked to yet? Maybe we should pay a visit to these guys here. This, I don't know what they're doing here. This, this group, this religious group here. Let's, let's talk to these guys. Okay, for starters, is this the leader here? Let's talk to this guy. An unattractive, disheveled man is greedily looking around the dusty street with a thievish look in his eyes. When he sees you, he snaps his fingers and with an unnaturally wide smile on his face, he shouts. It's you again! Would you like to take a look at the leader of the world revolution who is now resting in the lovely town of Krasnoznamini? Just 15 rubles and this amazing privilege is yours. Fifteen rubles. Okay, sounds like it. Sounds like a scam. But you know what? Maybe we can gather some information from this guy as to where these individuals live inside or in the outskirts of Krasno's nominee. So we can find that book or that interview. We have to interview somebody. Remember, uh, Sergey. We have to inter interview a Sergey. 
Okay, it's only 15 rubles. Show me Lenin. You hand the money to the man who's greedily licking his lips and, bowing subserviently, he lets you inside the house. Oh. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Well, let's go in. So what do we do here? Okay. Let's talk to him again. The man beckons you with his finger and proudly places his fists on his hips. Ask me any, even the trickiest questions. Okay. Tell me about the life of Vladimir Lenin. Sure thing. What about exactly? Well, let's say his childhood. The future leader of the Comintern was born in the town of Onyanovsk, now known as Simbursk, in the family of a state councillor, Alexandra Ulyanova, and the mighty bear hunter, Ilya Blank. In his childhood, Lenin took part in one of his father's expeditions to the far north, where he personally shot a giant bear with a crossbow. Uh, this is nonsense. The names and titles are all wrong. Everything's wrong. Everything is very much right. I rely exclusively on the latest discoveries of historians. Okay, then tell me about his mature revolutionary years. Ah, yes. After Tsar's Gendarms executed Vladimir Ilyich's brother, Alexander III, he arrived to the starving Leningrad in an armored car and in December started the Great October Revolution. During it, the new economic policy was implemented. Kerensky was defeated and political prostitute Trotsky was exiled. The rest is history. I'm not kidding. I'm in physical pain from listening to this stream of lies. There's not a drop of lie here. Just a slight exaggeration, perhaps. Let's change the subject. Tell me how you got his mummy. Oh, well, it's a long and entertaining story. Could you be more specific, please? How did you retrieve it from the destroyed Moscow Ah, have you heard of the secret Moscow underground tunnels of the KGB? The thing is, apart from everything else, I was an agent in this organization, and so had access to the tunnels. When the first bombs fell, the first thing I did was to drag our respectable comrade Lenin through these tunnels. I can well believe it. Another question. And how did you deliver it to Krasno's nominee? Well, during the Great Migration to the South, I transported the mummy, claiming it was my friend and disguising the leader's true identity under the glasses with a fake nose and a long wig. Vladimir Ilyich was so well preserved that all the people we met on our way were convinced he was alive. Just not very talkative. Uh-huh. And how do you keep it preserved? The thing is, a special balsamic vinegar is used in the embalming process. It's made of grape must, and that's one of the goods still sold by some of the traders traveling from the south. That's what keeps the mummy in such perfect condition. <clears throat> yeah, I see. Let's change the subject. Tell me about Lenin's heroic feats. Oh, there were three great feats in the life of Lenin, apart from the revolution. His victory over a monstrous Myrmek, 
a single-handed building of a Stalin's skyscraper and the taming of the bloodthirsty Fanny Kaplan. Okay, tell me about the victory over a monstrous Mermic. In the memorable year of 1917, the dwellers of Petrograd were terrorized by horrendous giant Mermic. This monstrous ant that reached the size of an elephant due to the effect of a radiation chamber of the eccentric zoology professor Vladimir Ipidyavich Perasovkov tormented citizens who were suffering already as it was. It ate the buckwheat harvest and caused hunger in the Volga region. But Lenin wasn't taken aback by it. He dragged a log to the Mirmik's lair, carved it into a stake and put the monster's favorite food, buckwheat porridge, on its very tip. When hungry Mermek rushed to eat the porridge, he impaled himself on the stake. What are you talking about? Mermek's appeared only recently, after the war. Oh, it wasn't a modern day Mermek, but um, a Mermek from back then, a result of an experiment gone wrong at the Red Ray State Farm. Okay, tell me about the building of the Stalin's skyscraper. One day, Comrade Stalin decided to build what is called a skyscraper in the center of Moscow. But since the general electrification hadn't yet reached the city of Kazan, the all USSR's garner of the particularly sturdy alloys, this idea of his was, so to speak, put on hold. It was once again Lenin, who suggested the right solution. Let's use the granite from the quarry on the Neva, Qua Neva Key to build it, said the leader. And it turned out he was right. During the next Sakhanavite five-year plan, a real skyscraper was built in Moscow. So they began building these high rises after Lenin's death, not to mention everything else you've said wrong. Well, after Lenin's death, they simply began building them in big quantities, while the first experimental one was uh, built in the times of our dear chief. So how did Lenin tame Fanny Kaplan? Oh, on July 29th, at the factory named after Vladimir Ilyich, the mean right-wing socialist revolutionary Fanny Royd, also known as Kaplan, attacked our dear father, Comrade Lenin. Without any warning, she stabbed Lenin who was working at the factory, in his heart with a knife covered in curare poison. But her plan didn't work out. Right over his heart, in his chest pocket, Lenin carried his party membership card, the knife of the evil-minded right-wing socialist revolutionary Fanny the Royd, or known as Kaplan, bounced from it and stabbed her right in the eye, which caused her to turn into green bubble mud the very next moment. Yeah, her story is so far from the truth that even a person who knows nothing about history would have been terrified by it. Exactly! Not a historian. A pathetic amateur would be terrified. But you and I are serious people who know and respect history. Okay. Tell me about yourself, mister. Oh, haven't I introduced myself? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll mend it at this very moment. Great Anatoly at your services. A showman, as they used to call it in the West. An amateur historian with a philology degree from the VA Staklov University. As well as your humble guide to the maze of Comrade Lenin's life. Try me. Well, so far, it's all clear as it is. Okay, let's just go look at this ourselves here and see what we can find. You bend over Lenin in his sarcophagus, which looks like a very ordinary coffin. The mummy doesn't react. Watch the mummy closely. You seem to notice the mummy's breast rising a little, as if Comrade Lenin is breathing. This is... To put it mildly, slightly odd, as he's been dead for at least 80 years. Sniff the mummy. Surprisingly, the mummy reeks of alcohol, cheap tobacco and onion. You narrow your eyes suspiciously. 
This is not the appropriate smell for the precious father of the Russian revolutions. Tickle the mummy. You raise your fingers over the corpse, but the warden of the tiny museum jumps up on his chair and rushes to stand between you and your target. No, no, you can't touch the exhibit. For a second, it looks as if Lennon's mummy sighs with relief. Okay. Well, okay, we'll step back from the money. Interesting, though. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go. Okay, we're going to talk to this, this lady here. I guess she's the leader right here. The young woman standing in front of you is rather attractive. But there's also something repellent about her. Her troubled and restless gaze, her strange mannerisms, and the unnaturally serene smile frozen to her face. As she sees you, the woman gestures with two fingers of her right hand, a sign you've never seen before, and lowers her head. It was not your two feet, but Blessed Mother Cosmos who brought you to the sainted martyr of truth, Varnia Banana Divai Christu. In the name of the sitting wolf, I often teach lessons of utopian religious anarchy in this town, in spite of the hypocrites pushing me away. You must have heard my speech. Tell me. Servant of God, did I manage to convince you that all earthly authority is false? I don't know. Somehow I haven't made up my mind yet. All you managed to say is, somehow I haven't before your interlocutrix has finished the sentence for you. Made up your mind? You haven't made up your mind. Is that what you were going to say, child? Your mind said it faster than your lips. But the great magician Varna knows many hidden things. Is my telepathic ability not enough to sway you to trust my worldview completely? It may or may not be so. I still don't know for sure. The woman looks at you reproachfully. Oh, Thomas, your skepticism was bothering me even back during my first incarnation. If you don't believe in the divinity of Varna Banana Divai Krishtu, you can attend her enlightening sermon in Ultradnoye village where she... That is, I will talk about the true nature of cleanliness. Now it's time for me to go. With a commanding gesture, she summons her associates and they all leave together. Yeah, what strange people. Okay, well, what did that, what did that do here? Oh. You're still staring after these five when a surprisingly well-dressed man with a clean haircut approaches you. He stands next to you and places his hands akimbo on his hips. Did you see that? That's the sort of people who are roaming the wasteland these days. Yeah. Oh, the times. Oh, the morals. Tell me about it. By the way, maybe you'd like to make some money. The man turns and gives you a big smile. My name is Igor, and I represent a scientific charity called Mycelium, or as our enemies nicknamed us, the Mushroom Cult. We, however, are anything but a cult. Oh no, another cult member. 
No, 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 no. I'm not a cult member. We have nothing against the existing official religions. We are just a scientific and educational philosophical movement. Listen, I'll be glad to discuss any questions you have. But first, I'd like to make you a job proposal. All right, what do you want to propose? The man comes closer to you. Unlike most wasteland dwellers, he doesn't stink of body odor, alcohol, or any other even more unpleasant substances. He only smells of clean clothes and a bit of road dust. The thing is, I've been following the activities of this so-called Divi Krishtu for a long time. And the conclusions I've drawn are rather grim. We are dealing with a leader of a potentially very dangerous cult. Continue to listen. You look like someone who knows how to behave in the wasteland. So, I would like to offer you to follow these cult members for a while. To find out whether they are really dangerous. Well, it sounds simple enough. But before that, what am I going to get going to get for this? Money, items needed for your further journey, food, anything you want. It will depend on the results of your investigation. All right, you convinced me. How exactly should I be following them? As far as I know, Divai Christu and her disciples are on a small tour around the wasteland. She's determined to find some new poor souls who would believe her dubious sermons. Right now, they are on their way to a small village of Otrad Noye. Intercept her there and learn about their further plans. Alright, I'll try to do that. Great. Once you've gathered enough information, come back to me. Anyway, if you have any questions about our organization, don't hesitate either. Just approach me. I'm nearly always standing here in the suburb of Krasna's nominee. We'll see. Maybe I will approach you. Okay, that's another mission. Here we go. Where does that go on this list of missions? Does that go here? Or does that go fall under Othred Noye? Where does that fall under? See, these are the ones I want to do before we leave Krasna's nominee. The head electrician, Trader Yashin. No, okay. I guess it's Othred Noye. Yeah, here it is, Igor. Okay, so we are going to be heading back to Otridnoye. That's okay. That's okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Stories building. Let's look at the map. Let's look at the map. Okay, so we went here. Then we... I think what we're going to do is we're going to head back in here. Yeah. We're going to head back here. Okay, where are we? Here we are. So, let's go here and let's look at the map again. Now, maybe, you know, I'm thinking this just might be our outskirts right here. This might be our outskirts. So. Let's check this building out here. I think we've been here before, but let's see if we have success with this building. Okay, let's read our journal again and let's look at that mission. Okay. Here it is. So Vladislav Zerenko asked us to ask me to interview a veteran of the Battle of the Berlin Wall. Okay. Sergei Maslov. He should be living somewhere in the outskirts of the city in a nice house. Okay. Well, a nice house. Uh-huh. 
we haven't seen any nice houses in this city at all but maybe just maybe this is considered a nice house <laughs> maybe let's go in here doesn't look too promising does it and this does not look like a nice house but considering what we've seen so far in Krasna's nominee it might fall under that category as a nice house oh look what's in here let's grab that it's another alarm clock what's with these alarm clocks well let's give it to Fidel okay let's keep looking around yeah okay well, we're not gonna take a TV What is that? Another alarm clock. Are you serious? Okay, I don't think we need another one. Is there anybody in this room? No. There's nothing there. Okay. Oh, there's something here. Let's go in here. And I don't think anybody's in this room. What's in here? Uh, condom. Yeah, we'll grab that. We'll grab that. Fidel, you'll have to find your own. Uh, let's see here. Oh, lost. What, 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 do, what else do we have here? What else do we have in here? That's probably a good idea, you grabbing this stuff. You never know. It's always good for the protection. Uh, let's see here. Let's go through here. Who's this guy? sensor uh do we talk to this guy i can't remember if we did oh this this is a new this is new i don't remember this who's in here who's this guy a tall man in his 30s with a long melancholic face and a rickety back sits in front of you he looks in the window languidly gesticulates and cries something out soundlessly from time to time. As he sees you, he smiles shyly and nods. Good day to you, a simple passerby who can turn up to be a rich investor. My name is Gubstov, a poet and a writer. Are you here to talk about my dick? Poet and writer Gubstov stretches out his hand, then changes his mind, raises it to clap you on the shoulder, changes his mind again, and quickly hides it in his pocket. Uh, God forbid, i just getting acquainted with the uh, locals. I'll be glad to talk to an intelligent person. What have you written? What are your famous works? The writer lowers his eyes embarrassedly and picks at the floor with the sole of his shoe. Nothing that has been printed yet, but I have plenty of unfinished stories in my desk. I could have recited some of my poems, but after my public performance, the Krasna's nominee authorities forbade me to do so, and I abide by the law. However, my latest literary work will surely bring me long-deserved fame and glory. That will show them all. Okay, then another question, bookless writer. How do you earn your living? The writer's pale cheeks go pink. I, well, I'm not ashamed of my job. I call myself dirt fighter and let me tell you this is a very important and a very poetic job at that 
especially when you need to clean up after someone's been shot, or a mutant toad has exploded in the middle of the city, or some especially stinking waste has gathered in a public place. A public, a poet and a cleaner, how romantic. Well, can you answer one more question? What can you say about Krasna's nominee? And our poet's respected here. Respected, yeah, sure. One of my poetic performances was banned for indecency. As if praising the voluptuous body of a big-breasted beauty is more indecent than prison songs that are so popular among the local lowlifes. As I was giving my second performance, the audience thought I was not right in the head and tried to lock me up in a mental institution to carry out experiments on me. But still, they give me work and don't touch me until I start reciting poems of mine. Thanks for that. If nothing else, just don't give up. One day they'll all listen to you. Not me, though. I have to go. Okay. Well, that was interesting enough. Uh, I don't think we'll be taking anything here with him staring there in that direction. Who's this guy? Have we talked to this guy before? You see a surprisingly decent man in simple but neat and clean clothes. He strolls around, whistling under his breath. As he sees you, he stretches out his hand with a friendly smile. Sergei Maslov, veteran, what can I do for you? Indeed, what can you do for me? Here is Sergei. This depends on the event you need me for. In the kindergarten, I can talk about the war. At the reception, entertain the guests. At the merchant's guild's party, talk about the importance of teamwork. If you train mercenaries, I can share my combat experience. A man like me will be a gem of any gathering. I don't organize any events. I just wanted to have a chat. I'm quite a busy man. Any day now, I'll be giving a talk at the Chamber of Commerce, then teaching the guards some tactical maneuvers. But sure, if you have any truly important questions, I'll answer them gladly. Where do you get money apart from your performances? My main source of income is pension. It's hard to believe, knowing who I am, but I had to knock on all the doors in the governmental bunker to get it. The Chamber of Commerce had no respect for my great deeds, not for the great country I represent, but I taught them some respect. So now I have enough for modest living. Well, for everything I need, really. I got you. Are you in the mood for another question? I'm listening. How's life in Krasno's nominee? Well, since I taught the local government respect and sense of duty to the veterans, the country's heroes, my life got tolerable. My former comrades in arms now try to taint my name, but they conveniently forget it was I who pressed the government to issue pensions for the members of the last war. Oh, you're so shrewd. I have another question. What would you say about the political situation? I'm a humble old warrior. I'm used to serving people by heroically rebuffing enemy attacks on the battlefield. But as soon as I have a chance, I'll make up myself a candidate for entering the Chamber of Commerce. People who govern it now will be the death of us all, later, if not sooner. Oh, you're an inspiring, uh, aspiring politician too. I have another question. Got any good rumors to share? There's another veteran in the city, but he's not like me. He's more like an anti-veteran, a veteran of the criminal group Death. He tried to persuade me a couple of times that his former cronies are planning an attack on the city. Personally, I don't believe him. A thief and a gangster always remain a thief and a gangster. Thanks for sharing. I have another question. Let's change the subject though. Uh, by the way, what would you say if someone asked, for, asked you for an interview? Hmm, this depends on the newspaper. Well, a man called Zarenko asked me in the hotel. 
I see. Well, usually I demand a fee for an interview, you know, but if it's published, it can spread the information about me and my deeds, so I can make an exception. Great, let's start. War, war is calamity. This is what I wrote to my dear wife, Svatna Markovna, on the terrible day when treacherous NATO agents, who tried to pass themselves off as peaceful protesters, partially blasted the Berlin Wall, where I was on duty. Oh, and where's your wife now? Alas, she, I, uh, she lived in Moscow. So she died under the bombs? Well, go on. Yeah, so there I was, only worried about one thing at that moment. A little girl amidst the protest. The activists thought we were shooting at them, not just at the provokers, and ran to the checkpoint. I jumped with the crowd from the wall, from the 30 meter high to the sea of people, and covered the child with my own body before she was trampled by enemy agents on the crowd. Oh, you're a true hero. The man looks through you with unseeing eyes. The child, Gretchen, and her mother, Laura, thanked me in tears. They offered to go with me to the government of West Germany to tell them what I did, and about the provokers in the crowd. Oh, if only we had succeeded, I would have stopped the war by one brave act. So what stopped you? Rascals, rascals among us. A group of turncoats headed by Division Commander Petrenko, my immediate, so to speak, superior, detained me for defection, for bargaining with the enemy. It was then when I came up with my famous utterance. An eye for an eye is not a way of the noble, but a way to get blind. People saw just how tight right it was when the first bombs touched the ground. And what was your colleague Ambrose Trufalev doing that day? The last time I saw him before a retreat he was hiding from artillery fire. And what was your comrade in arms navigator Vysotsky doing that day? I don't remember. I guess he got shot in the arm and left. So what were you doing after the bombardment? Like everyone, I had to retreat. However, unlike many soldiers, I wasn't marauding, robbing and killing left, right and center. Even then I was teaching the survivors the intricate art of restoring the civilization after the apocalypse. One hell of a story. I get better go. I understand you have to go. I don't insist. Don't hesitate to say no if you are that way inclined. This won't affect our relationship in any way. But perhaps after you've just heard, you want to support the old warrior? Ah, uh, yeah. Why not? I don't have much money on me, but I can give you 50 rubles. Thank you, from the bottom of my soul that's seen the hell of battle and the paradise of people's gratitude. Good luck, veteran. Okay, so we met Sergei. And we gained a few experience points. Our quest log has been updated. So let's take a look here and see if we managed to do this. We did. Okay, so we crossed off one of these missions. So we have to go in and find now Zarenko because we did the interview. But we're going to do that in the next episode of Adam RPG. I hope you're enjoying the continuing story. Thank you very much for watching. We will be back soon.